Hi, my name is Bokhadar Ahmedov. Welcome back to the course of multivariable calculus. In this lecture, we're going to start talking about the sequences. And this is basically is going to be the introduction to the sequence. We are going to talk about what is this and what kind of applications it has. So the sequence is just a bunch of numbers which are written in some order. For example, you can write down the odd numbers as the sequence. So for example, it's going to be 1, 3, 5, seven and so on so this is going to be a sequence where you can write down the even numbers and this is going to be another sequence for example two four six eight ten and so on this is going to be another sequence so in general we are going to denote this the numbers in a sequence um, as the terms like for example this term is going to be the first term this is going to be the second term the third term fourth fifths and so on so in general you can write down the sequence as a1 a2 and so on a n and so on so this might go untold infinity so this is going to be a sequence so a sequence is a list of numbers written in some order and there might be different orders of the sequences um, so in general uh, we can write down uh, so let, 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 let's say let's do an example and write down the sequence example so let's say I'm going to write down the sequence in this way say so 1 over 2 2 over 3 3 over 4, 4 over 5, 5 over 6, and so on. And this might go until the infinity. So by just looking to the numbers, could you please tell me, is it possible to write down a general term of a sequence in a compact form using, for example, the n, right? So for example, this is going to be the first term, 1. So this is going to be the second term. This is the third term, 4 is fifth term, of the sequence and I'm just going to use those numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in order to basically general so like write down the general term of the sequence so you see so, uh, actually I can write down the general term of the sequence as n divided to z n plus 1 right so whenever you choose for example if you choose n to be equal to the 1 so what's going to be a 1 so basically you just need to substitute 1 instead of n here and it's going to be 1 over t. So if n is equal to the 2, a2 it's going to be equal to 2 over 3 and so on. So in general, a n is going to be n over n plus 1. And of course this is not a sequence, right? So this is the formula for the general term, but it's not a sequence. So we need to learn how to write down a sequence and the like in a proper form. So in general, we are going to denote a sequence in this way. So we are going to write down the general formula of a sequence. So if you don't know this, so in general, let's make it just a n, where n is going to go from one to the infinity. So in our example, it's going to be the set of numbers. So we're we are going to generate them using this formula n over n plus 1 where n goes from 1 to the infinity so the most important question is uh, so you see so you can write down this sequence which can go until the infinity in a really compact form and it's superbly important for us to basically uh, transfer this notation so if you are given a sequence in this form we should be able to write this down in a more compact form. And also, if you are given a sequence in a more compact form, you should be able to expand this. So let's do a couple of exercises. So let's say we are given an exercise. So let's say you've got a sequence in this way, 3 over 5 minus 4 over 25. 5 over 125 minus 6 over 625 
7 over 3125 and so on. So what we need to do is we need to figure out the general form for the sequence, right? So again, this is going to be the first term. This is the second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. So if you just look to the denominators here, 5, 25, 125, 625, 3000, 20, 125, you can see that they are the powers. And actually they are the powers of 5, right? So the A1 is going to be 1 over 5 or something over 5. So A2 is going to be something in the power of 5 in the power of 2. So A3 is going to be something over 5 in the power of 3 and so on. So what we need to do is we need to figure out actually what is in the denominator. So in the numerator, sorry. So the numerator is actually simply is increasing. So let me choose some. The color is simply is increasing. But the problem is uh, it doesn't start from one, it starts from three, right? So what we need to do is if you are going to have one, how to get the three? So we can just add two, right? So it's gonna be uh, one plus two here. So here you can write down four as the two plus two, three you can write as a three plus two. Uh, so what what I'm going to do is it's like I just I just like to write down the general term which is going to depend only on n. So if you just uh, tell uh, so I would like to figure out a formula so that by just substituting n I will be able to get any term of the sequence. Um, so so can you guess what's going to be general form of a sequence? It's going to be n plus two over five in the power of n, right? So indeed, if you substitute n to be equal to the one, you are going to get a one to be equal to the three over five. If n is equal to the two, it's gonna be a two, it's going to be a four over five, right? So the only problem is that there are minus signs sometimes, right? So the first term doesn't have this, but the second one has. The third term doesn't have this, but the fourth one have this. So it means that I need to include minus one in the power, for example, in one, right? So in this case, like minus one in the power of, um, so when n is equal to the one, it's gonna be minus one in the power of one plus one, which is going to be simply one. When n is equal to the two, it's going to be minus one in the power of two plus one, right? n plus one, it's going to be two plus one, which is going to be minus one in the power of three. So minus one in the power of three, which is simply multiplication of the minus one three times, which is going to give you minus one. So basically you have to put here minus. And here you have to put plus because this is plus one. So this is going to be the general formula of the sequence. And instead of writing down the sequence in this we can write this in this way. So a n, which is going to be minus one in the power of n plus one times n plus two over five in the power of n, where n goes from one to z. So uh, through the online quizzes, you're going to get a couple of exercises where you need to perform this transformation by just writing down a sequence in a more compact form or vice versa. So what we are going to do now is we are going to discuss a couple of applications of the sequences. Um, so you have probably have seen the sequences before, right? For, for you know, for example, the algebraic sequence, um, right? So let me do this. Applications. Okay, um, so let's say you would like to build a tower. Um, it means that using a Lego, okay? So it means that in, in every row, you are going to have some bricks. So on the top row, you're going to have one. On the second row, you're going to have three. On the third row, you are going to have 
five bricks. Five. On, on the next row, you're going to have, let me guess, it's going to be seven, right? So three, four, five, six, seven. Seven bricks and so on. So you would like to make this kind of tower. And what? so this is going to be, so in uh, what I would like to know is, so I would like to know, so this is actually the first row, second row, third row, fourth row, right? I would like to know how many bricks we need on um, 15th row, for example, or in general, any nth row. So in order to do this, we need to uh, create kind of sequence, right? So on the first, we have one, on the second, we have three, on the third, we have five, seven, and so on. So can you guess what kind of sequence we can generate here? So what is the general form for this? So the general form probably should be a n. That's going to be um, 2 n, right, uh, minus 1. So probably this is the good formula to write down the general form. So let, let us check whether it works. So if n is equal to so 1, it's going to be a 1. So 2 times 1 minus 1, it's going to be 1. If n is equal to so 2, it's going to be a2. So what we're going to do is 2 times 2 minus 1, this is going to be 3. Good. So if n is equal to the 3, it's going to be a3. It's going to be 2 times 3 minus 1, which is 5. So in general, what we wanted to know is, we wanted to know how many bricks we are required, we need, in order to build a 15th row, right? It's going to be, we need to find basically a 15 It's going to be 2 times 15 minus 1, it's going to be 29. So basically it means that we need 29 breaks on the 15th row. Oh, this is the simple applications of a sequence. Of course, we need a sequence in a, in a more sophisticated applications. But let's, let's, let's continue and let's see another application, which is basically is very important and has real applications in many, um, in many different areas of science. So let's say I've got a pair of rabbits, pair of rabbits. So in the beginning, so on the zeros, I've got just one pair of rabbits. Well, let me call this number one. So the thing is like this. So I have, um, so I have just a pair of rabbits and they are going to give a birth to one more pair after two months in the beginning, then every month afterwards. So the first time when a pair um, gives birth after Two months, uh, and 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 later, they are going to give a give a birth every month. So later, they are giving a birth uh, to uh, to the new pair. Of rabbits every month. So what I would like to do is I would like to just generate the uh, the number of the pairs, um, and, and and let's see what 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 we have. So in the beginning, I used to have just one pair of rabbits. After one month, right? So could you please read the first? Section. The first section tells me that if you have a new pair of rabbits, it doesn't give you the uh, the pairs every month. So in the beginning, you should wait two months. So it means that in the beginning, uh, you, you used to have just one pair of rabbits. After one month, you still have the same 
pair of rabbits. So now I would like to know that hey, how many pairs of rabbits I have after two months. So after two months, this pair of rabbits is going to give a birth to one more pair of rabbits, and now I'm going to have two pairs of rabbits, right? So after two months, I'm going to have a birth from this the new one. So after three months, three months. So here I have pairs number one and number two, the new one, right? So the new one, number two, doesn't give a birth uh, on, the, on the third after one month, right? It is going to start giving a birth after two months. But this one, number one, is going to give a birth every month. So only in the beginning I need to wait two months. And after that, the number one pair is going to give a birth every month. So it's going to be here. So this one is going to give you one more birth, right? But this one doesn't. So how many uh, pair of rabbits you're going to have? Three, right? So now you have uh, number one, number two, and number three. Number three is the new one. So on the fourth month, you are going to have a birth from the second one, from the first one, right? So here you have number one, number two and number three right so the number three does but number two now starts giving a burst and number one also gives a burst it means that you're going to have five pairs of rabbits so if you make the calculations on the fifth month it is going to be eight and so on so you see so you've got a sequence which is going to be written as one one two three five, eight, so can you guess what's going to be the next number? It's going to be 13, and so on. So the sequence is called as a sequence of Fibonacci. Since it was uh, mentioned firstly by the Italian mathematicians on the 13th century, and it was used in order to know, uh, in order to understand the growth of the population of the rabbits. Um, so basically, in general, you can write down the general term for the Fibonacci sequence, at least at this stage. What we can do is we can write down the rec recursive formula for this, right? So you can write this as Fn, it's going to be Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2, where n is going to start, let's say, from 3. Okay, so if you substitute, for example, 3 to here, it's going to be the third one, it's going to be the sum of the previous two. So, for example, if I, if I would like to find the next one here, what I have to do is I need to take the previous two and add them, it's going to be 21. And the next one is going to be, so I need to add this two, it's going to be 34 and so on. So, the nowadays, in this day, is the Fibonacci sequence is used in many many areas of science. So in biology it is used in order to understand the uh, the growth of the population of some animals and it's also even used in the computer graphics. So I'm going to show you here a, a fascinating example. So this is uh, the the shape of the so-called Nautilus and you can draw this using a computer using the circles and the radius of those circles are actually follow the Fibonacci sequence. So if you look to this two small radiuses, so this two small squares basically, they are going to have the side with the length one. So this one is going to have the length two and you can just make a square here and then this square is going to have the length to be equal to the three. This square is going to have the length five. This one is going to be eight. 13, which is exactly the Fibonacci sequence, right? So just using the Fibonacci sequence on a computer, we can just draw different shapes. So here are a couple of applications of the sequences. So in our next lecture, we are going next lectures, we're going to more concentrate on um, on so so called like a converging and diverging sequences.